Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast roundup. What a roundup it's going to be as well, because it's an incredible weekend of motorsport throughout the world. I want to talk about Christian Horner, and I was going to lay into it a little bit, because <laughs> like a lot of people, we're getting a bit upset Sky Sports, because from the UK, we watch Formula One through Sky Sports, mostly. You can watch it on Catch Up on Channel 4 and other channels as well. And it's the Christian Horner show. And, and you know, he's so knowledgeable and he's great that he's, he's always available to them. But it is literally the Christian Horner show. I've never known anything like it. And it's so out of context in terms of the amount of other uh, team principals that, that, that are interviewed. And maybe because he's English speaking or, or first language is English, because they all speak English. But it's quite a bizarre thing. What's your take on that, Tiff? <laughs> Well, I know so many people comment on Twitter and stuff, and of course now he's back in the press again because um, somehow uh, other people seem to have heard that he's broken the uh, the budget limits, and um, he's saying, "Well, that's not announced till Wednesday," and he's going to sue people for, for coming out with it. You know, um, I don't know how many people have claimed it. Is it is it just um, the Mercedes team, or is it others that have said like Ferrari? Well, nobody's also- claimed it. Toto just said. Um- Hinted oh, at it. Hinted, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's Wednesday's news. So he's now suing anyone that says, how can they know it if the results aren't out yet? But funny enough, I'm, I'm out in the Greek area of the world and I watched the whole Grand Prix live with these commentators. And, and even as the lights were going, it was like, you know, like two leg, like, three leg like, race. <laughs> and these... Two people just talked to each other incredibly quietly. It was so opposite. You know, I was waiting for the version. We were shouting, shouting, crofty. And they never got excited. Even when Lewis was crashing, Lewis Hamilton, barrier. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind a bit of passion. Was, you know that. There was no hoarder at all. But this was the quietest car. I quite enjoyed it, actually. I couldn't understand it until I could obviously read the race myself, uh, which was full of drama anyway. But... Um, I don't, I don't mind a bit of passion in a in a commentary or something you do, but it is getting a bit over the top now. It is getting, it is all about entertainment, as you would imagine, owned by an entertainment company, Liberty Media. So. But of course, but if, if this is true that they broke the uh, you know by a large amount the budget cap, so that's during last year. <laughs> I expect all the Lewis fans will be saying, "Right, you have to delete the Stappen's Championship." No, <laughs> no, I'm not suggesting. No, no, no. Um, but certainly, I mean, luckily he's got so many points that he, he would be the rightful champion this year. I don't think you want to take it away from him. But, uh, you know, the Kubiks, obviously, the, if they did spend extra money last year, it would help them develop this incredible car that, you know, apparently they employed 65 people more than anyone else, which was work out in salaries of about £28 billion. Pounds, I don't know. Um, but if it did give them advantage for this year's car, then there will be financial or points penalties Presumably, Max can take about 40 points or something. He can take and a huge rest. hit. But it's more likely to be manufactured. It'll be the constructors' um, championship, I would assume. I don't think they're going to take any drivers. But it's it's a huge thing because this budget cap is what they've made the foundation of the future of Formula One on to try and stop you know those with money just running away and leaving the likes of Williams and Haas you know, with no chance at all. Um, so it's a big point because obviously this is the future of Formula One, budget capping. And it's going to get tighter, one assumes, in the future. So um, we wait for Wednesdays, apparently, when we're officially going to know who did break and who didn't. Apparently, two teams have broken it. Someone knows. Aston Martin, knows. apparently, as well. This is the second one. According to Christian, how can anybody know? Because we don't know. So anyway. But the, the, um, they actually can, apparently, take points away. But I don't think... For drivers, points away. But I don't think they will. Yeah. And, and that's not the way to do it. They should have, as we all know, as we all agree, however good a driver Max is, however much you love him, they should have. Uh, taking that away from him in in Abu Dhabi, but that, that's a completely different. That's story. another. Don't go back. Don't go uh, back. We're, we're not. We're, we're not going back. But it so was a dramatic we, race, didn't it? We had a dramatic Grand Prix. Well, we had a dramatic we qualifying. That, that, uh, in the world, so, commentary like. So starting um, off with qualifying, it was quite a dramatic qualifying because, of course, it was lots of thunderstorms, wet, dry, wet, dry. Well, not very dry, but uh, uh, sort of intermediates. So uh, the qualifying was quite exciting, uh, and then, of course, petrol gate with uh, with Red Bull. <laughs> I couldn't work out where I was. Why did he bought the first? He had one lap that he was heading for pole, and then he pitted. I don't understand. And then he went out again and had another lap heading for pole, and then he ran out of fuel. 
So why did they stop him completing the first fast lap? Did you understand that, or have you read it? I'm not quite. Sure. Yes, I, I read it, and it's um, that he had one little error, and he wanted to go purple the whole way. So which he would have he okay. would have been pole position if he carried on with that lap, which yeah. is quite bizarre, really. But uh, anyway, it's it's such yeah. such tiny uh, details in terms of uh, perfection for these teams. Um, and they and they miscalculated it. So um, because it's unver- very unusual, as we all know, in qualifying in Q3, uh, P3, to to go out there in uh, Q3 to um, uh, to run the whole session. Normally you'd come yeah. in. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Run out. You can't fuel. So that yeah. was qualifying. But then we got um, Leclerc on the front row with the again. Parents. Again, <laughs> Lewis doing well, but George having a nightmare. We just had a nightmare every weekend, basically, didn't he? He didn't, he didn't get the quickest lap on the um, the green tyres. It looked like he was safe, didn't it? But then, of course, a few cars came out on slicks. Well, I don't, none of the slick cars actually got any better. It was more people staying out and, and getting another run on the on the intermediates. I think it was um, Lance Stroll came up again, and he pops into the top six when it's wet. And I hate to criticise him because I think as, as an overall driver, you know, he doesn't deserve, you know, he wouldn't be hired by Red Bull or, or McLaren or Mercedes or anybody, you know, to drive for them. But he does occasionally come up, especially in the wet. I was remember the first, it was at Monza, he qualified fifth or something out of the blue in the rain. And then he, he led that... Um, He's a brilliant was, wet weather driver. Yeah, he led, which is the Grand Prix led? Not some um, Israel, which is the country. We don't go there anymore. It was Israel, maybe. Anyway, he led forever. Uh, then he... I think strategy, he lost the race, but, um, and he was there up the front doing well in his Aston Martin. And Aston Martin go from being the two slowest cars to the sort of leading the midfield pack occasionally. And it's, um, so you have to big up Lance and he had a reasonable race, beat his world championship mate, Vettel. Um, but yeah, the race was really, I mean, it was a bit of a dull race, to be fair, the first sort of two thirds of it. No DRS, of course, pointing out how you just can't overtake Max, then made that awful start, which we all enjoyed. Let's let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning because uh, they held the race. They delayed the race. They delayed the start because it was wet. And the whole point of having wet tyres, one would imagine, is so they can race in the wet. So it's all, everything now has got a little bit safety the other way around. It's uh, got too too safe almost. (laughs) You just feel like Half an hour earlier, they could have potentially got the race going, but they eventually got it. You obviously know what they do in uh, NASCAR with the, the Air Titan, where they go around and dry the track with the big, yeah, big, yeah, big machine. Blowers. Lots of people are saying, why don't they do that? Um, but should they have started the race earlier? Should they have started the race on wet tires and or given them the, the problem is it, go It's the spray, especially in street circuits. Absolutely, this is the trouble. It's not so much the cars can't drive through the puddles. I mean, that's risky. Sometimes it was aquaplaning. It does puddly areas of the track. But I think the main trouble in the race visibility. This is what they're terrified of. And I think with these, you know, the air, these modern Grand Prix cars for the last twenty years or so that have been throwing so much water out the back, um, huge plumes. That you know, and it hangs in street circuits, hangs in the air, and visibility is just so bad. I think that's really the main thing. It's not so much the grip of the tires, which isn't good when the puddles are a bit deep, I admit, but uh, I think it's more visibility they think hold it yeah. back for. That yeah, I'm with you on that one. That's a good explanation. Thank you. So, um, um, race wise, so we had a delayed start. Max had an awful start. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and fell down the pack, and that was the story. That was the story of his race, which is very unusual for him. But a lot of these drivers, remember Sebastian Vettel. A lot of the, a lot of these drivers, when they were in the pack, they weren't very good uh, because they're so used to be out out the front and and just having maybe a one or two horse race. So yeah. um, they're not very good in the pack, and it is awful, especially on the street circuit, because one mistake and you're you're out of the race, or you've got to you, you know you go in for a new nose or something. Yeah. But Max, I mean, he got through the, the middle fields, but he got completely stuck. Did he caught? Was it Vettel? I think he caught. There was a back of a little Norris Vettel and someone else train, um, and he was really stuck there. Uh, and it was really the first sort of um, virtual safety car that got him back towards. The, and then a safety. Well, so when it goes safety car nowadays, they don't catch up very. I presume they're still stuck to sort of virtual safety car segments because they're all rushed back up and form an instant queue. In fact, when they restarted, there were still some people that hadn't closed the gaps. I don't understand the rules. Obviously, you can't go, maybe it's an average speed you have to stick to under the safety car. But the safety car, the virtual safety I was annoyed really that, that we kept on having virtual safety cars for just people that parked badly. <laughs> and the Zhao one, the Zhao had virtually driven into the escape area. And then they pull out a full safety car. They never actually filmed what they were doing. 
It looked to me like it was some of the marshals could just under, you know, virtual safety, I mean, the virtual safety car, even the yellow flag, got it out of the way. Later on, we had Ocon, didn't we? Ocon blew an engine, was heading to run off to park, and then suddenly, at last minute, turned left. So he was now on the track and had to be pulled back out, and then we had another safety. I think we have to find drivers now that make a pathetic effort to get their flipping cars out of the way. So we don't have yet another virtual safety. I don't know how many virtual or full safety cars there were. I lost count in the end. It got boring, didn't it, really? <laughs> it did get boring. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, we suddenly had um, you know, Charles attacking Perez, um, which looked like we were going to get an overtake. And I keep on waiting for that day which DRS is supposed to create. You know, one overtakes on one lap, and then the other guy repasses on the next lap. You know, if they're yeah. so equal, you know, that they'd, they'd stay within a second and get back past and have a proper dice. Um, but then all of a sudden, Checo just checked, Checo checked out and right at the end. And I read today, Charles, you know, he made all that effort to get so close. Then as soon as he lost the DRS, Checo was gone. And um, I know everyone, I mean, I know we must have created, it was an amazing drive by Checo. But you, 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 you can only really judge how good Checo is when you compare him with a certain teammate. So qualifying, you know, he would have been probably half a second slower than Max. Max could finish one of those laps. And if Max had been out front ahead of him in that race, probably a bit like Leclerc and Barry Sainz, you know, Verstappen would have been 20 or 30 seconds in the lead in those conditions. He would have disappeared and left Checo. So it still doesn't make Checo a brilliant driver, the fact that he drove a brilliant race. I mean, he made no mistakes. He was under pressure. So it was a great drive by Checo. But in that Red Bull, you know, they, I think they got such an advantage. I mean, every time Max cleared one, you know, back mark, he was on the back, was he? Just caught up the next little group in in about three or two or three laps. So um, the yeah. Red Bull round there in those conditions seem to be absolutely the cars I have. Yeah, and the fuss they're making about him winning a Grand Prix. I mean, he's quite a popular <laughs> chap. I don't, I don't really get it. I, I think, I think there's lots of people that would <laughs> would be better in that car than him. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. He's a, clearly a very popular chap, so I've got to be careful what I say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my, it's my, my... Well, I'm with you. I mean, I, we all like him, but he's not a brilliant driver. No, he's just a very, very good driver in a brilliant car. Yeah. Um, which you is why get... I think you know, if, Red, if Red Bull had got a hold of Lando, you know, it's like when the science went to Ferrari, I said Ferrari got the wrong McLaren driver. I think Lando is right up there. Uh, he could be good in a Red Bull. And a couple of others, but not many. There aren't many brilliant drivers. So it's no disrespect to Checo to say I don't think he's a brilliant driver. There's only about five or six of them. You know, two in the Mercedes, one in Ferrari, one in Red Bull. That's two, three, four. Maybe Lando five. Um, brilliant drivers, in my opinion, on the grids today. Yeah, well, Gasly. All, I'm, I'm sure Gasly. I know all, Gasly. No, they're all brilliant, but exceptional is the difference, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's that little little bit. And, and Max is. Uh, is certainly exceptional at the moment. Um, I, I reckon... take Grand Prix, but not that exciting, okay. really. So, um, Lando fourth, good, wasn't it? And I was going to say, good for the for the McLaren boys, a fourth and fifth for um, the a well. Is that where did that come from? All those they, were, they were celebrating like they won first and second <laughs> as well. <laughs> All of a sudden, Ricciardo had, had forgotten completely. Ricardo, who had completely forgotten, didn't even think was still in the same race. All of a sudden, well, <laughs> he's sixth. Where did that come from? Right, we got to talk about one more thing in Formula One before we move on to W Series is um, the Pierce Gate, the piercing gate with the with Lewis. Oh, I haven't, I haven't even bothered to <laughs> read it. I was at. Well, they find the team and not Lewis. Apparently. Yeah, twenty five thousand euros. Um, they find it. It's just all silly. And then, has he then, still got anything pierced on him when he races? He's got his nose. He said the problem is, is still there. He said it's soldered in. The doctor gave a note, like it, like at school. The doctor gave a note and said that it, I can't take it out because it'll be infected again and blah blah blah. And he and he, you know, he said, look, the, the FIA is saying, well, it's heat conducting. It's metal. And he said, well, yeah. my, my chin strap is metal. You know, the, the buckle, the, uh, oh, my, my zip's yeah. metal, uh, yeah. and, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's but they, yeah. I, I agree with the FIA. They need to, a rule is a rule. How, what, however yeah. silly it is, a rule is a rule. So um, yeah. even if people have been wearing it for years. Anyway, W Series, JB Chadwick could have won the championship for the third Crashed year. out. Crashed out. It's a disaster for the W Series people because, have you read, they're going bust. I mean, I've said this. Well, it's no years. wonder they're going bust. There's absolutely no say, wonder. Nobody paid? watches it. Nobody follows it. And, and it was all about paid? nurturing these women, and we don't see it. It's 
so frustrating. I think, we I want think it I was to happen. Someone in the know. I think they because it was always their business plan. You, know, you have to look at this as a you know financial investment by some very brave man or men, um, David Coulthard's mates, isn't it? Um, and I think the, the the business plan was to build it and hoping that Liberty would then buy it off them, you know, bring it under their wing or something, because they were never going to make money by sponsorship or anything. I think they, they did have a big sponsor lined up, which is a bit, there's a bit of a sort of Liberty versus W Series aggro that they had a big sponsor and that sponsor pulled out under pressure from Liberty, I don't know. But um, yes, they were obviously getting more and more in debt. Nothing was coming back their way. And I think they rather hoped that Chadwick would win it this weekend so they wouldn't have to do two more rounds. So now they've got a championship that still isn't won. Um, whether they'll turn up in, in America or even more in Mexico, I've no idea. But um, it's a, it's a it's sort of, it is a bit of a sand ending if it does end to a very bold idea. But I think it was misguided. A lot of people thought it was misguided. I did originally. I said they should have just sponsored individual, go and find a karting girl and a full I'm for, you know, individual, a bit like Red Bull do, you know, Red Bull sponsor individuals in the lower rankings of karting and Formula Four and Formula Three. Um, but um, anyway, but Jamie, yeah, Jamie, well, the qualifying, you had to be out early, didn't you? Because the rain came halfway through their qualifying session, um, which made the grid a bit unusual. Um, and off they went, and they but they all, they all survived. Well, Jamie was about the only one that crashed, wasn't you? Yeah, it was, again, it was a nothing race. So it's, you, you haven't got very many cars driving around. It was just for, for, look. We are big fans of getting uh, females in motorsport inspired. or any, any any sport, not just motorsport. As long as W Series has inspired, I keep on asking. I have to go to the MSA to find out if there are more female car license holders now than there were three years ago. Has it inspired? more eight-year-old girls to you know get on carts and that's its main objective um and whether that's worked or not because there's always been women in motorsport you know i was down at brooklyn's the other day you know on the walls k peter who used to race an mg around brooklyn's in 1927 28 20 i don't know 1935 it was competitive and respected and nobody you know disrespected her for being a woman racing you know back 1930s um so i think you know talented women there's just not enough girls wanting to do it at a young age and um i get a lot of criticism, criticism on, on twitter about you know, these billionaire boys dominating and the girls don't get money and nobody gives the girls any sponsorship i mean jamie won a million dollars already and i think she had comes from a family that's reasonably wealthy you know and, and some of these billionaire boys so-called fathers are you know remortgaging their houses to get their boys into formula four and formula three um, so I'm sure there's will that is there. There is money there. Um, it's just finding someone that's going to be, I don't know, Jamie's looking at um, Indie Lights, um, where she can go over there and, and compete. Um, but I think it's great that so many women are doing it. Those three women won the um, class in a Ferrari and the Spa 24 hour race. You know, there's loads of women now driving in GT racing. They're not quick enough maybe to be, you know, Formula One or Formula Two stars, but there is loads of opportunity. Uh, for, for women to go out and earn a pro money as a professional racing driver. Okay, well, let's hope it has inspired uh, the next generation of, of ladies come through. Um, what else? What else happening? Yeah, Around quickly, we had other world championships all getting excited. New Zealand, Kale Rovan Pera, I think he became the youngest ever rally world champion by winning yet again in New Zealand. He sort of had, they kept on going to rally and win the championship this year, and then he had two bad rallies or three bad rallies, but amazing conditions in New Zealand. I mean, they love those stages, but it was wet and slippy. Um, first day is usually his championship leader. He had to be first on the road, so he dropped back a, a, nearly a minute, I think, behind. And then, of course, when he was out, like everybody else, running fourth or fifth in the pack, came to the win. Um, Sebastian Auger, Toyota teammate, second. Uh, Elfin, another bad rally, another Toyota front runner, got a crash. He's been, he's been so so near, but he's just just oh, so no. far away, but so near. We've we've been now he's got Cali as a teammate. Will he ever? You know, I think his day might have been gone. Those two years on the trot, wasn't it? Ogier just nicked him in the last <laughs> round, and I fear that Delphin's chances are gone. Uh, Ford fell apart. Poor Craig Breen. I know he's fast, and we all love him, and he wears his heart on his sleeve, and he's in tears. You know, he's gone off. And he fell off at this famous corner where McRae fell off. You know, pace notes, everyone has these, you know, crash corners in their pace notes. It would have been highlighted, you know, double caution, you know, McRae corner probably. <laughs> but um, he just slid wide and down the hill. Um, Gus Greensmith and the other surviving four, he was having a good rally, but a huge rollover, big shunt. Um, so it's left to the three Hyundais to finish the third, fourth and fifth. 
I think in sixth place was the first WRC2. Um, the Kiwi whose name I apologise for getting, or Aussie, I apologise for getting Aussie or Kiwi wrong. Um, he had a really good run. He was a world championship rally driver, and I've forgotten the name, I do apologise. Um, but he finished sixth overall in a, in, a, in a Formula 2 car, as it were. So exciting running New Zealand, but Kelly Robin Perry now crowned world champion. MotoGP is getting tighter and tighter uh, out in Thailand. It, again, Fabio Quattraro. It was like a one-man band trying to beat all the Ducatis. I think he qualified about fourth amongst eight or seven big Ducatis on the grid. But it was wet for the race. His setup was a disaster. And he dropped back and dropped. He ended up 14th. Um, whereas up front, it wasn't Ducatis that won because there was this wet weather specialist, Miguel Oliveira, who came oh, to do so with the KTM. Has anyone ever watched this? Because it's just the most nuts thing. When it's wet, they are literally power sliding these things oh, no. on two oh, no. wheels around corners. Oh, no. I've never seen anything like it. It's oh, no. complete. What, how are they wired up in their heads? <laughs> it's just not right. <laughs> there was Argy Bargy before they went out in, uh, what was that? In Motor, that uh, Motors GP wasn't it? There was in a pit lane. There was a little bit of elbows out as well. I think with um, uh... that was previous. Then there's this story come out about a young British guy um, who was punched by his mechanic a few years no, ago. No, no, um, uh, yeah. Barry Barry Baltus, and I think it was uh, Moto, Moto Two. I think Moto Two. I think it was. But it was a bit. Uh, I've got to get that. A... Got to get that. Go to World Championship. Go to go to New Zealand. You're good at go to New Zealand rally results. While I talk about Moto Two and Three, I want to, I've got to name that guy that finished. Sixth overall in a okay. two car. Go to work. Um, yeah, so MotoGP, Bangnaya finished third, Miz team at Miller was second. Uh, he's now closed that championship to just two points behind Quattararo now uh, as they head off to wherever next, which is not next weekend, so I don't know where they're going next. Anyway, still a couple or three rounds to go, and MotoGP getting very tight. Uh, Moto2, just the British riders, uh, Jake Dix, that on solid run to fourth, which is really good. He's really, he's, he's signed up again for next year. I think we said that last week. So Jake really going well. Now, Moto3, Scott Ogden finally had a better race. He had a few bad races, finished 15th, which is where he was sort of early part of the season, 15th. And then he dropped backwards. Now he's come forwards again, which is good. Josh Watley was 23rd. It was Jane, um, John McPhee sadly crashed out. So and, a lot of excitement in MotoGP. So... World Rally Championship, of course, is Hayden Padden from Hayden. He's yeah, a key. So he's, he's a key. key. Hayden, really good. He had a he had a World Championship ride with one of the manufacturers about four years ago, and he still wants to get back. And he's always been quick. So Hayden, apologies for getting on, but I forget a lot of people's names. <laughs> As people that listen to this regularly, I'm forever. And starting a story that I run out of the punchline. So your, 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 your knowledge is pretty good, I'll give you that. It's, a, it's <laughs> certainly a lot better than mine and the average person. But uh, we, we forget um, names when we get to, when you get to our age, you forget names. Especially uh, your age. So we, we also had NASCAR at Talladega, which I was going to, I hope you didn't watch it. I just pray you didn't watch it. Because <laughs> there wasn't a crash. There wasn't the big one. I couldn't even find a highlight. So that's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> there was, I think there were about two spins and about they had a yellow right at the end, which actually spoiled the race. Um, my son was what he's reported by my NASCAR reporter has told me. Because sometimes the a race really is good. You know, there was a pack of ten out front really jostling, playing this game of 200 mile an hour, you know, poker and moving slowly, getting the right lane, getting a push. But there was a the yellow flag right towards the end um, for some debris on the track or something. So I had a green white checker, and that often breaks the race up in these super speedway race. A last minute restart often spoils the race. Uh, but Chase Elliott won it, which is so a star of the final playoffs won it, and we move on to the um, Roval, the um, oval race at Charlotte next weekend to decide which eight will get through to the final eight out of the 12. I'm on the edge of my seat. I am literally biting my nails and uh, the, the excitement is just unbearable. But anyway, Can't back wait. home, British Superbikes was excitement. As always, British Superbikes, they're also built, they're in their playoff. Although it's getting pretty much like a Bradley Ray procession by the looks of it. The, the McCams teams, of course, had that awful open part race with their two crashes. Um, Mackenzie not coming back with his leg break. Um, but um, Jason no, Halloran still came back for more. Uh, he was still in with a shout of the championship. He had a second in the first race, and then a seventh in the second, and then a crash in the third race, and he left the circuit in an ambulance again. Um, so Halloran's title bid looks like over for the McCams Yamaha, Yamaha team. 
Um, Tom going Sykes down that hill there. at Donington, what's the hill called at Donington? Where you, the trainer curves. Trainer curves. Oh, on a bike, that yeah. must must really get the ticker going. Well, actually, funny enough, well, my bikes. I had one. Tra- I've had one track day at a bike. It was at Donington. Well, I was led by a Honda rider. You know, and I was I was quite good at the medium speed corners. And when I go down the crane of curves, he just disappeared from me because I kept on understeering, as I call it. The first right was okay. And then when it comes to left at high speed, what you don't understand is that the gyroscopic effect of your two wheels is actually holding a bike, tries to make a bike stay upright. So the faster you're going, the stronger this force is. So sometimes you see a rider fall off, don't you? The bike keeps going yeah. right down the straight and crashes on its own. And so you don't realise how much effort you have to do. So I was doing the right hand bit okay, but you really have to move your body weight over to counteract the gyroscopic effect. I just couldn't, couldn't do it. Well, you look at these <laughs> lads, and uh, you know, lots of the smaller guys, uh, and they are literally hopping over no, no. The, from one side to the other, like no, they used it in the sidecars. No, it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, but Sandy O'Halloran's crash actually wiped out the winner of the first two races. Tom Sykes had a brilliant weekend in Ducati. Um, and he was in the front pack in the third race when O'Halloran ran out of the um, road and smashed in the back of him, which put them both out and put O'Halloran back in an ambulance again. Um, but Tom Sykes won the third race, not Tom Sykes, Bradley Ray run the third race, the other Yamaha front he's, runner. He looks he's got like one he's hand, got, one hand on the championship now, hand. two hands almost. But yeah, yeah, lots of action. Um, and that was about it for the weekend. I mean, the, the only race, of course, this weekend, we've got all sorts going on. We've got BTC, the Grand Championship finale uh, going on at Brands Hats. We've got the Formula One in Japan, uh, where, again, Cam Max tie up the title. But I think by the time we get to Japan, with, if this Dita story is obviously going to be a lot of sadness um, arriving there, there's going to be the Wednesday scandal about whether they broke the budget or not. So plenty to talk about in Formula One next week. The World Superbike is going down to the Algarve. And it's NASCAR. Guess what? NASCAR. And Charlotte, <laughs> the Roval. Now, what is the road course inside an oval at Charlotte? It is, and also, it will decide, you know, which four are cut. Could I'll be watch, really exciting. I'll watch the highlights. But as always, thanks and for joining And who's in it? Who's in it? No, no, quick, quick, Tiff. Tiff, someone's having a go <laughs> on the road course that's a street racer and he's going to do the Roval. And I can't remember who it is. <laughs> Again, told you, I start these stories. Ah. Answers on the postcard below, please. So anyway, yes. Thanks for joining. Next week.